Hey everyone, welcome to Cinemaholics. I am your normal co-host, John Agroni, your usual co-host, I guess. But it's just me actually on the microphone right now doing this because I literally just finished watching Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And this is an instant take, an instant reaction that I'm recording to talk about this movie real quick. And so Will Ashton isn't here, but it's just going to be me and this is going to be short and sweet and to the point. So hopefully you enjoy it. I'd like to do more of these. I think that it could be kind of fun. It usually, it usually just depends on when the embargo for these things are up. In this case, the embargo is up. I can talk about this movie, but I'm not doing a full-on review. We're still going to do the in-depth review, of course, on Cinemaholics. We'll get into the plot details. We'll talk a lot more about the movie and the reactions to outside of just our own and everything. So, But for now, I'm going to do a spoiler-free kind of a vibe check on this movie and give you a sense of really what you might want to expect or what you might expect when you might go see this. And I know that there's been some anticipation for this movie. It's definitely it's definitely a brand that has been in the air for a while. I guess Tim Burton is a brand too, depending on who you ask. But I guess to start things off, and again, I'm not going to get into anything spoilery at all, just going to give you a really basic reaction to this. Uh, I should share, of course, what I think of the original Beetlejuice, which came out in 1988. I'll admit, I didn't watch it a ton when I was younger. I think I might have watched it a couple times when I was a kid. I I wasn't that into it. I remember watching the cartoon a little bit, but I don't know. I, it's Beetlejuice. I, I always felt like it was not my favorite. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. I don't think the the humor for Beetlejuice has really been a thing for me. Like I don't know if I've fully appreciated the humor of Beetlejuice the way I see other folks seem to. So that definitely paints my impression of this movie and will hopefully be helpful for some of you listening who might be curious about the movie, but maybe you're not super fans. So off the bat, if you're a super fan of Beetlejuice, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, you know, that uh, you're, you're, you're probably ready to go. You probably already got your ticket. You're going to check it out and make up your own mind and everything. But uh, maybe this will, you know, appeal more to folks who are a bit on the fence. Maybe you are like me and you watch Beetlejuice, the original, and maybe when you were younger and it's not, you know, it's not something you've been heavily anticipating, but we are in the early fall movie season. There's not going to be a ton of new stuff, big stuff to watch necessarily right now. Uh, But Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which of course, I guess they'll they'll do the third one as Beetlejuice, 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 who knows? Who knows if they will do a third one? I don't know. But yeah, I, I'm not sure how this is going to go over with folks who are the super fans. I am not a super fan, but I can give you a sense of what the folks in my audience thought. They seem to be clicking with this movie quite a bit. Uh, there was some laughter. I won't say that it was laugh a minute or anything like that. It didn't seem like my audience was super into it, but it had its moments. And to be fair, I have to be super transparent. It was definitely an audience that was primed to really like this movie because there were folks who were dressed up. It was more, it was not just a press screening, it was also a promo screening. So there were a lot of people there and uh, I could tell that a lot of folks there were big, big fans of Beetlejuice. And, and yeah, you know, I I could hear some people while, while we were walking out, you know, that were saying like, that was really funny. That was hilarious. So I'm certainly happy for those folks. They seem to have a pretty good time for me. Honestly, I didn't really love this one. I did rewatch Beetlejuice last night, so I wanted to be ready. And yeah, funny enough, I forgot a lot of what happened in the first movie. It's a good thing that I rewatched the original because I forgot so many things. I forgot that it was Alec Baldwin (laughs) who plays one of the main characters, and I forgot how much Beetlejuice wasn't in it. It's it's a short movie, and even then, there's not that much Beetlejuice, and it's funny because, I mean, Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice is such a iconic thing. It, that shtick really stands out, right? But yeah, it's it's not something that I, I, I wouldn't have guessed, right? That he's barely in the first one. Uh, one thing that this, this sequel does kind of carry over in that respect is that they don't overdo Beetlejuice. He's not in every scene. He doesn't permeate the entire movie. It is kind of similar to the first movie in that He's not in it a ton. However, he is definitely in it a lot more than he is in the first one. He shows up earlier in the movie and things like that. So 
if that was something that you didn't like about the first movie for whatever reason, if you're like, hey, not enough Beetlejuice, then you shouldn't have a lot of complaints there. But we do have a lot of the returning cast as well. I believe uh, Tim Burton was the director. It did say at the beginning, a Tim Burton film. I assume he directed it. But this is one of those things, by the way, for those of you who don't listen to me uh, often on the show, I, I don't really watch trailers much. So I didn't see the trailer for this. And I didn't know what kind of movie I was in for, but I had to assume from the poster and some of the marketing that I kind of, you know, spied a little bit that this was your typical legacy sequel, you know, 30 years later, of course, when Nona Ryder is back, it, I, I knew that Jenna Ortega would be in this and Catherine O'Hara, uh, not all the original cast. And they kind of, you know, explain that away a little bit here and there of like, okay, here's why this person isn't here. All right. Uh, some characters don't get mentioned at all, at least that I didn't catch. But, okay, in terms of how this movie plays out, and I do have to bring up the first film a lot, unfortunately, so I have to be a little repetitive, I guess. But what I liked about the original and rewatching it is that it's simple. It's simple. It's charming. It's The randomness and the absurdity honestly isn't even my favorite thing about that first movie. And it's, again, not my favorite movie or anything from Tim Burton. Uh, I'm a a typical old fashioned Ed Wood fan, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, it's very watchable. It's a, it's a fun watch. You know, I, I was watching it. It's it's a vibe. It's, it's got a little bit of creepiness. I think that the, the performances are what carry that original film. And when you watch the second movie, you don't really have that simplicity anymore. You don't have a ton of that charm. You just have a lot of the randomness and absurdity dialed up to 11 and the plot itself is really messy. I mean, there are so many characters and plot threads in this, and it just doesn't quite have the right hook to it, I don't think. The premise just, it really feels like a first draft. When, I'm, when I was watching this, it really felt like they sat down and were like, all right, well, what's the sequel? What, what, what happened in the last 30 years? And they kind of just went with maybe the first couple ideas that they had. It didn't really feel brainstormed or really thought out like people really gave this some deep thought of like what would be really funny what would be a cool way to revisit some of these characters what have they been up to and a lot of it particularly with Winona Ryder it just didn't quite feel there like they they really nailed it and as a result a lot of the plot stuff is just sort of I don't know whatever is this movie about anything not really I mean I think, if anything, what was fun about that first movie is that it plays with the tropes, right? You're watching a haunted house movie from the perspective of the ghosts, and it plays it up for laughs. And then when the Beetlejuice character comes in, it's it's just a very like out, larger than life character who kind of comes in and makes the whole thing even more fun, even more enjoyable. But the sequel, it, it just kind of digs down in what it knows, I guess, that people like about the first movie. And then it does a lot more of that. I don't know. There are so many plot threads in this thing. I, I, I told you I wouldn't get into plot details and things like that. But I got to say, there's, there's something that happens in this movie that's supposed to be a plot twist, I guess. But I don't know who in the world is not going to see it coming like from the first scene. I mean, I was sitting there being like, yep, I think I have this completely figured out. And that's annoying. That's frustrating. I, hopefully that's not everybody is going to be watching this because I hate it when that happens. So all that said, I my my instant reaction, my instant take is that it's just not very good. I, it, I don't think this was a really good sequel and it was kind of disappointing for me. And, and I didn't even go into it with pretty high expectations. And, and I went into it full eyed that it's like, all right, this isn't going to be the first movie. It's not going to have that same kind of appeal. And Tim Burton has changed a lot as a director storyteller in all these intervening years. I really hope that I have it right that he's the director. But yeah, I I genuinely was still hoping that while I had a feeling the first movie was still going to be the one I prefer of the two that I don't know, that the, the sequel could kind of earn its place and and be at least worthy like as a follow-up. But honestly, if I'm judging this by the sequel test, which is something that I just made up, which is that all right, if you have to choose, like, you know, it's, it's a Sunday night and you have to watch a movie and it's either Beetlejuice or Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's either the original or the sequel. How many times out of 10 would I pick the sequel? And so that's the test of like, all right, was it a decent sequel, right? 
And for me, nine times out of 10 in that situation, I'm going to pick the first Beetlejuice easily, period, end of story. The only time I'm going to pick it, that 10th time, I will pick the sequel out of morbid curiosity of like, okay, yeah, I haven't seen that thing in a few years. Was it any good? I don't know. I don't really remember. I'll rewatch it, sure. But nine times out of 10, I'm going to go with the original because it genuinely is a, a fun watch. It's a comforting watch. And I, I did rewatch it years and years later, and I had a good time with it. And even though, I, again, it's, it's not quite my type of humor, I guess. It doesn't really make me laugh. It just kind of, I find it a little amusing at best. It does seem to make other people laugh. I think that it, it is a kind of absurdity that hits that chord with other folks. So I don't know if I'm being a little harsh on it for that reason unfairly, but of course you have, you have plenty of reach. You'll be able to find much bigger Beetlejuice fans out there who can hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect with this one from your perspective, if that's the case. But all in all, thank you for listening to this. Enjoyed, of course, getting to talk about this instant in, a, in an instant fashion. And of course, I reserve the right to change my opinion, to change my mind after I process the movie. Hey, maybe, maybe after a conversation with Will Ashton, I'll come around. I won't be so, so harsh on this one. Who knows? This is just kind of how it goes, right? Uh, sometimes our first impression just takes time to marinate, right? And sometimes if you read a really good review, you might appreciate something that you didn't quite pick up before. I'm hoping that's the case, but for now, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little bummed out that I didn't like this one as much, but it it's fun. I, I didn't have a bad time watching this. I wasn't super annoyed or anything like that. It's it's not a terrible movie at all. It's just pretty mediocre, uh, in my opinion. So we will, of course, as I mentioned before, talk about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice in more depth with Will Ashton on the main show pretty soon, hopefully. And so you'll be able to listen to that when it drops on the main feed. But hope you hope you enjoyed this instant take. If you do like it, be sure to let me know. You can hit us up directly on our email in the show notes, or you can join the Discord and chat with us. And uh, you know, if, th- if this is the kind of thing that kind of that that this format, if you're into it, we, we can hopefully do some more. We'll see what happens. But uh, for now, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>